Let's bring on our guest. You know his name. He's the best out there. He's a big fan of uh, George Michaels and Wham. Frank Analysis <laughs> is here with us. How you doing, Frank? What's up? How are you guys doing? <laughs> Great to be here. Thank you for being I know, here. I don't know what who that guy is. That <laughs> <I know. laughs> you don't know who Wham is? You don't know who George Michael is? Come on. What the hell? <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> Wake me up before you go-go. <laughs> So usually I tell these jokes with boomers or Generation Xs. I forgot I got a, uh, a Z. What do you call them? Gen Z. Gen Z. Or? Are you Gen Z? I'm not. I'm not Gen Z. Yeah. I'm at, I, I guess I'm at the cusp. I'm from 1993. So I think after you're, 96, you're a Zoomer. If I'm yeah, not. You're yeah, you're millennial, but you're like yeah. almost a Zoomer. Yeah. 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 You're like Johnny. I graduated high school in '91. Jesus Christmas. Johnny's right at the cusp, right? He's like '94. He's, like, uh, he's '94. Yeah, we call him Johnny oh, Cusp. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into it. He's going to be our co-host today. Uh, Frank Analysis. Thank you so much. It was great seeing you at the Force the Vote event uh, in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. We all spoke. We went over to the Assange event. Uh, so we got to meet the man in person. Uh, thank you for joining us, man. You've been on fire lately. Your show, Frank Analysis, has been awesome. I like the idea of you bringing in educated people and fans of the show and getting their analysis. It's been very intriguing watching your shows of late. And I don't know what it is, buddy, but you got a way of tickling those people up above you to come down and get mad at you <laughs> with your tweets. Uh, you know, even when I when Max Blumenthal met you and we were standing right there in, in, in action for Assange in front of the uh, – uh, the State Department, he goes, wow, Frank, you got a way of really pissing some people off. So I think it's kind of <laughs> great that you've been able to tap in there and get those people like the you know, Mickey Cons and other people <laughs> like Jordan to get mad and Anna attack Kasparian, you. <laughs> yeah, Anna. Oh, God. Uh, I've seen I've seen Jank respond to random people, though. But if they're responding because they feel guilty, they feel guilty because people are calling them out for their bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to go right to section three then. We're going to skip over section yeah, two. Yeah, we'll do go it. back to it. All right, so we'll go over to section three right now, uh, and we're going to talk about your favorite person in politics, Frank. Uh, AOC. Mm -hmm. No? It's not yeah. your fave? So, Frank, I don't know if uh, I'm going crazy, uh, but, it, it, I, you know, because all these people on the, on the, the whatever, the boutique left or the Sam Cedar left, they're all saying, like, you know, we criticize AOC too much. Like, she can never do any right by us, and... Like that, you know, we're wrong that she's an ally, right? That she's she's here for us and that she's doing what she can within a very corrupt system. This is what they're saying. And like they're they're like, you can't, you know, AOC goes to a, a union protest and you guys tear her down. She, <laughs> she just doesn't do anything wrong. And they, they're saying I like we're ask we're mocking her situation where she feels like her life was threatened. Right. And I did. I did. I did laugh uh, at several points because. Either I'm crazy or she's being really disingenuous. And and I, I, I just don't know. I asked them, like, am I crazy? Because she seems ex extremely dis disingenuous. So she had a date with um, MSNBC. Hmm. Um, and she went on and she did this whole video. And she said, um, Biden had a good faith openness and relationship to activist community. Uh, saying we are not going to be resistant to grassroots movement, but we're going to collaborate with grassroots movement to create as many jobs and as much justice as possible. So she's over here on MSNBC pretty much carrying water for J Joe Biden administration and how he is doing uh, operating with good faith, openness and a relationship with activist communities. I just want to know, do you feel like Joe Biden has been doing any of that? What are your thoughts on her doing this on mainstream media? So that was absolute gaslighting nonsense. Like she, she is saying that about the guy who said that he will not ban fracking. And then he said, I'll repeat that. I will not ban fracking. Joe Biden is not even for the Green New Deal and that doesn't even ban fracking. So let's talk about the part which AOC said that we are going to work with grassroots movements and activist communities. Joe Biden put Cedric Richmond as the director of public engagement, a man who received roughly $341,000 from donors in the oil and gas industry, the fifth highest total among House Democrats. Uh, this is according to an article by Sludge. So if we are trying to mitigate climate change with the aid of activist groups, how is having a man like that, who is going to be in charge of interacting with interest groups, going to help us mitigate climate change, if that completely conflates with the interests of his donors in the oil and gas industry. And then we also have John Kerry. 
John Kerry, who Joe Biden put as the special presidential envoy for climate, John Kerry thinks that we can combat climate change by increasing military tensions with China and Russia. So I, I was reading an article a couple of weeks back by Mint Press News uh, by Alan McLeod, which uh, talks about John Kerry talking to this Washington think tank called the American Security Project, AST. And then he said that the three priorities as Biden's right hand man is to have number one, have a huge rebuilding of the United States military bases across the world. Number two, countering China in the Pacific. Number three, preparing for a war with Russia in the newly melted Arctic. So it makes absolutely no sense to me. And Biden having these picks who will serve the military industrial complex, who are the top contributors to climate change and environmental destruction and fossil fuel companies, that tells me he's not serious about mitigating climate change or working with activists. So AOC is covering for him. Therefore, she is covering for corporations because that's who Joe Biden represents and that's who his administration represents. Yeah. Let me play devil's advocate here and I'll, I want your two opinions on this, guys. What, have, what do you say to the people that say, no, AOC is doing what she can. She's going to reach for the stars and she's going to settle for incrementalism, thinking that she'll get something from Joe Biden, that she honestly believes that she's acting in good faith because she believes that she can work more with Biden rather than Trump, who is a complete fascist. I mean, is there any sense of like maybe she's trying to be genuine and trying to get something done or you guys believe it's completely just an act? Go ahead, Frank. I would say it's just an act. Like she she wants to make she wants to network with people in her party. Um, she wants these like committee positions. But I mean, when has incrementalism ever worked? It doesn't work for us. It works for the for the rich elite who pay these politicians. Right. We get incrementalism in the other direction. I think we're at a breaking point right now where, where I mean, we we were in a pandemic, whether, you know, you think it was pandemic worthy or not. The economy shut down. It still is shut down in many in large sectors. Uh, it's no it, we're still not completely running. We have people who haven't paid rent. We have we have people who are completely unemployed, who lost their health insurance. So we have more uninsured people, more homeless people, more poor people. And and then you have this happen in the market where you have Wall Street speculation happening again and the elites being able to change and manipulate the market to uh, up, up, uphold them, to benefit them. And the, the little people get screwed again. So you're seeing in real time the decline and fall of an empire. And as a so if I considered myself a socialist like AOC considered herself a socialist and I was a congresswoman, I would use right now the anger, not not in a very manipulative way, but in a real way, the anger of the people of, of the working class who are seeing this this these manipulations and this very just lack of of care for for a basic human rights this this disdain for the working people of america they know that they can get away with this because they've gotten away with it before and they have been rewarded dutifully for for being corrupt and so if i were her what i would be doing right now is organizing a, a mass general strike to uh re, um to bring back glass steagall to literally overturn citizens united to say go two thousand dollars in every home right now for yeah. the next year i would go and say medicare for all right now we're not gonna we're gonna stop this economy just like we were holding our stocks we're gonna stop this economy we're gonna shut everything down and we're gonna do this together me and the squad we're gonna do we're gonna help you guys we're going to provide through mutual aid. All of these things that are very socialist that could be done. She is not doing them. Instead, she is appearing on highly, highly paid uh, MSNBC, CNN, propaganda, state media machine, and carrying water for Joe Biden yeah. and the Biden administration. And if she ever has the opportunity to do something uh, like worthwhile, like maybe speak out for a union to offer $1 of a raise, she does that. But then the next day, she's on Team Vogue. And, and it's a photo op and it's a wonderful opportunity. So, no, I don't think this is genuine. I think she is carrying water for the establishment and I don't think she has to do this at all. That fee ran brought to you by Bitcoin. Buy now. <laughs> Listen, I, for the record, guys, uh, I want to be clear here, Frank Fee. I think she's full of shit, right? I really do. <laughs> I was playing devil's advocate there. But really, if she was for real, she would use her 12.1 million Twitter followers to get people in the street to put pressure mm -hmm. on the things we want, like Medicare for all, which she ran on or whatnot. But I mean, 
there are people also too as well, and I think we were talking about. She screams into the air. That's what bothers me. Like the whole CARES Act, right. she just screams into the air. Now this here is about Robinhood. The next tweet, right? We need right. to know more about Robinhood's decision to block retail investors uh, from purchasing stock while hedge funds are freely able to trade the stock as they see fit. As a member of the Financial Services Committee, I'm supporting a hearing if necessary. She's not calling out Janice Yellen. She's not calling out the connections. She never calls out her own party. She never calls out anybody right. who gets in the way of what's going on. Yeah. So that's why I think she's just full of crap when she screams into the air. But, you know, guys, there are people out there who are saying she's just playing ball now until she gets the power eventually, weathers the storm, and then she takes over the party. Is there any thought process to that, Frank? So what what happened after that after that tweet exactly they, wasn't there somebody who agreed with her yeah so ted cruz like, agreed with other, her frank the other party yeah. yeah so ted cruz agrees with her and then she says he says fully agree and then she goes on and distracts from the issue okay because now the issue now now <laughs> we're talking about uh, speculation and the little guy getting stomped on and when he says i agree she says i am happy to work with republicans on this issue where there's common ground, but you almost had me murdered three weeks ago. So you can sit this one out. Happy to work with almost any other GOP that aren't trying to get me killed. In the meantime, if you want to help, you can resign. And so so now we, we're not talking about Wall Street speculation on the little guy. Now we're talking about AOC and woe is me, how she, how she accuses Cruz. And I don't like Cruz, by the way, not even a little bit. She accuses him hyperbolically of getting her killed there is like literally no proof of, of, of him trying to do that. I, I'm just going based on the facts here, not because I like him at all. Uh, and it's and it's crazy to me, Frank. What do you what do you think about her reaction? The partisan theatrics theatric just can't stop for AOC. I mean, what, what a distraction to the important issues and need attention by going back to the stupid narrative that the problem is just the crazy Republicans who are apparently, according to her, responsible for the capital storming. And it, it certainly wasn't because of a lack of transparency in our election. And it certainly wasn't because like our government isn't helping us uh, during a pandemic or in general for that matter. Instead, she's she's going back into this these partisan theatrics to distract people from these major issues. Uh, so if Ted Cruz had a D next to his name instead of an R, she would be loving all his tweets. He would have been, she would have been loving that, that tweet in which he, he was agreeing with her. Right. Because yeah. I mean he's for war just like Joe Biden is. He's 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 pro he's a pro fracker just like Joe Biden. Uh, it's it's it, like he's a he's a corporate prostitute just like Joe Biden is. But AOC is just serving the Democrats by having us get distracted in these partisan theatrics, and it's absolutely ridiculous. She's the great distractor, is what I call her. I mean, she's the great distractor. You, Anything that's going on right now, nobody's talking about anything what's going on with foreign policy right now with these Democrats. They're just confirming all these people, letting them get in, whether it be Lloyd Austin, whether it be Blinken, all this shit. Well, uh, this is a great meme over here, too. And, and it's this whole mic. It's the <laughs> OMG kind of mentality right now where a lot of young people who are involved in politics, I think they really buy into it. Like, oh, my God, she was really almost murdered. You know what I'm saying? So here's Caitlin Johnson with a meme. And, <laughs> it's just. I was did you murdered. see that, Frank? Yeah, I saw that. I OK, saying, so yeah. I just want to comment on this. OK, because she got a lot of 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 pushback be because of this meme. Nobody is saying they want AOC getting hurt, like, first of all. And, and I'm going to speak on behalf of the show. We in no way, shape, or form are claiming that we wanted her or anybody to actually get hurt, even though they are screwing the American people uh, continuously uh, off of any from anything, from anything that's a basic normal human right that exists in every other country. Let's, let's put that aside. Nobody here is saying they should have been mobbed or lynched or any of that, okay? But when you when you are melodramatic, this reminded me her reaction, and I forgot to say, reminded me of Frank. I don't know if you've seen uh, the telenovelas, but you know, mm -hmm. especially the Mexican oh, ones yeah. where the actress is like, oh, like oh my god, you, like Dios mío, like Maria Teresa or whatever the hell it's called. Like it's insane. Uh, trust me, I've watched extreme. enough soap operas to know. Yeah. Like, this, great. This, this, the, I mean, she could be a great telenovela yeah. actress. I'm telling you, hey, put her in. Maybe there. that's where her career should have been. Yeah, with <laughs> the music.
<laughs> with the music on, <laughs> close up on the face and stuff. This I mean, one, I'm, all she does, listen, she is the most dangerous person right now in Congress because she oh, has such a huge you're get following. So much pushback for that. I mean, no, she's one of the most dangerous <laughs> person in Congress right now because she is a great distraction. She never lets, she never calls out a party for anything, and she puts people's minds where it doesn't need to be. I mean, we're not talking about anything of importance because AOC keeps distracting. Why are you really worried about on. Mitch McConnell, Pasta? Why are oh, you I can't attacking those guys the, too? Why are you attacking the? the because because she was given this so much power, and her her whole job was to fight against the establishment. That's why we put her there. And now she's just simply providing cover for them. She's she provides more cover for the establishment than anybody out there right now. A O C. So, Pasta and Fee, would you guys say that this is an insult to countries that actually have had like a violent coup in their country, like <laughs> like in Chile in the seventies, like in Indonesia, yeah. like all these other countries that the U.S. has intervened in violently? assassinating leaders and people innocent people falling victim victim to that as well like wouldn't you say that that's kind of insulting it is insulting. beyond insulting it's insulting yeah. when, did, just... when did congress members become like a, an untouchable person in society and stuff they're supposed to be out there fighting for the little guy and stuff like that they're supposed to put their lives on the line and everything from you know scrutiny from people in the government from people citizens you know who don't agree with them since when are they now like just <laughs> higher than ever and then people just praise them i was almost murdered oh my god and people are like oh <laughs> omg are you okay since when did this happen i was almost murdered but i you know i pushed the cares act which yeah. literally uh, had so much money over there for our military industrial complex and the mil militarism and imperialism that we're pushing on everybody. Now we're sanctioning, we're droning. We're going to continue to up that tenfold, but we never talk about these things. This is what I, I get so angry about, the American exceptionalism of, oh my God, the, this was an insurrection. You guys wouldn't oh know an God. insurrection if it hit you because this you this is what we, we, we actually overthrow and coup and bomb everybody all over the world. And, and literally we're, our imperialism is beyond racist. But then you have these woke, fake, like leftists who say oh my god i can't believe i had to vote for joe biden because i wanted to mitigate damage or oh i had to do this because uh, i care about people of color you like you don't understand what it's like to live in a country in the global south that suffers from u.s imperialism that the populations fight amongst each other and and these countries can't get their shit together because the boot of the american uh the the american just foreign policy the, the war machine is always there trying to put in wh whoever they want. And if they don't, they screw that country. That country is forced to, like Venezuela, to enact a more anti-American policy because we try to get in there. And then they, and they still are able to provide to their people far better conditions during a pandemic than we, we, we are to yeah. our people. Like, it, it's a joke. Yeah. I'm going to defer to the caucus leadership. Go ahead, Frank. <laughs> like, um... Speaking of deferring to caucus, she was talking about Venezuela and Anthony Blinken and Joe Biden are now recognizing Juan Guaido as the leader there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then she was, there was like a video of her recently where she was like cutting up vegetables, like saying like that they don't have democracy in Venezuela. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's just ridiculous. And she's pandering to not only the establishment and the war machine, she's pandering <laughs> to certain uh, constituents in her in her district, too, That's as well. Uh, and who she was supposed to be like, we all expected her to be. Like Shama Swan, right? This is the yeah. this is the person mm -hmm. that like and uh, Fee, you put this in the folder. I'm assuming, right? This is a a great video right here. Listen to this real quick. Yeah. So uh, let's just let's just listen to it. Uh, basically, Shama is a city councilwoman in in Seattle. They're trying to get rid of her. I'm gonna look more into that. We'll see if we can get her on. But they're basically trying to get rid of her. She's really effective. She is not a Democrat. Yeah. She has she understands part, taking uh, on power. Yeah, yeah. Of socialist alternatives. Socialist alternatives. Are yeah. Right. right. Uh, yeah. yeah. The party's leadership is not on the side of working people. So yes, you are going to be in conflict with them. There is no space, there's no universe where you can be at peace with the power brokers of the establishment and yet win victories for working people. Such a thing is not gonna happen. If you want to win victories for working people, you are going to have to take on that conflict. As long as our leaders on the left believe that it is about parliamentary arithmetic and um, you know, insider tactics, it, it is going to be a death knell for the movement. We are not going to win Medicare for all by an insider strategy where 
uh, you think your political capital depends on whether or not Demo uh, Nancy Pelosi is happy with you. Well, Nancy Pelosi is never going to be happy with you if you're going to fight for working people because Nancy Pelosi is not on the side of working people. It's as simple as that. Awesome, fam. She's basically making an argument for force of vote. She's making an argument that AOC is 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 more concerned with with making sure she's okay with Pelosi than she is on challenging her. And that's the thing. You're never going to do you like you can't you can't say you're fighting for working people if you don't challenge the people blocking legislation from becoming a reality for working people. Like it is it doesn't work that way. Yeah, yeah. And uh where's she been on AO uh, where's where's AOC been on uh Assange? You know, we we were together at the Assange mm -hmm. act, action for Assange. Where's she been? Nowhere. Zero zip zilch we put up a tweet from jesse zerwell zerwell friend of the show uh, aoc assange omitted constantly you know what i'm saying <laughs> constantly. that was a good one so i mean yeah you know frank how do you feel about um you know people who think that because there's still plenty of people on the respectable people i will say on the progressive end who think that reforming the democratic party continuing to run candidates under the democratic party is still a viable uh you know tactic what do you think about that tactic do you still think like it's possible like we should even pay enough attention to it i think that we need to be telling these people i mean look what what is she actually doing systemically to change things like we we don't do this because we want to like fight with you we're, we're trying to inform you about the ineffectiveness of aoc and the squad like they're now like they're they're more productive in making the Democratic Party look good than actually helping the working class people. Like we want to help people realize that. Right. Like yeah. we we're not we're not just doing this because we have a hate for AOC. No, we're doing this because we want to wake you up and to take action instead of sitting down, like sitting on your couch or sitting like in your chair while like hoping that these politicians are gonna do the work for you. They're not gonna do the work for you. Like you have to apply pressure, otherwise they're not gonna feel it. And AOC and the squad, they're going to feel like they don't have to do anything. Like people are loving them on Twitter. So they're like, oh, I guess I'm doing a good job because people are praising me. You have to actually apply pressure to make them feel the urgency that our, that our country is actually facing right now. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the fact is that we, we, we've talked about it often on the show, the uh, Freedom Caucus that went in there. Uh, they weren't establishment Republicans. They were more that Tea Party mentality, but they made... Uh, they made what was his name cry? Um, Boehner. Jeff, uh, is it Jim Boehner? Or I can't. Uh, J uh, John Boehner, I believe it was. John Boehner. He cried because they were like, you know, and we we were expecting these uh, squad members, these progressives, to go in there and do the same thing, make Nancy Pelosi cry and quit because you won't give her away, but she doesn't. And just the other day, Blinken once again, this guy is the biggest warmonger out there. He now got confirmed. It's in, and somebody's calling him out there. Here's Tulsi. It's not surprising that the Senate approved Blinken as Secretary of State. After all, he is a warmonger, as are most of the senators in both parties. I mean, that now, is... now she's out of office, but 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 <laughs> yeah. wow. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. I mean, she flat out called him a warmonger. I mean, that's that's savage. I you know, she's out of office, and you know, like I said many times, I don't agree with Tulsi when she says on everything. Um, I you know, I. I, politically, she's to the right for me, but at the same time, she's the only one talking about a free press. She's the only one talking about mass surveillance. She's the only one that was talking about the election. Uh, she has multiple election bills that pe these people weren't paying attention to um, before this election even. And so I just think to me, like, why is nobody, now that she's gone, there's not a single Democrat that's talking about Julian Assange, the Espionage Act, any of this stuff. It's really sad. I right. wish more politicians would accurately call Anthony Blinken and Avril Haines and all these other people mm -hmm. in, in Joe Biden's administration now, like what they actually are, which is warmongers, but they're not going to yeah. do it because I guess it's impolite. Like Anthony Blinken helped lead the U.S. into the Iraq war. This yeah. is a man who supports the apartheid state of Israel, yep. and he wants Palestinian leaders to not only recognize it as a state, which they already did, but to recognize it as a Jewish state, which would further take away more power from Palestinians. Yep. I mean, this is a guy who, along with Biden, re again, recognizes Juan Guaido as the leader of Venezuela, which is completely undemocratic and imperialistic because Maduro was democratically elected. People didn't want Guaido. Nobody even knew who the guy was. He's a loser. And then when he like came back from like 
the US, like when he was in the airport in Caracas, people were like throwing water at him. Like people don't like this guy. Yeah, <laughs> he, yeah, and yeah. then, uh, so AOC, by not calling out Blinken as either some, un, she's either, she either lacks knowledge or she's unprincipled. Yeah. I think that it's the, I think that she's just unprincipled because she, I think she knows this information. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. she's just, she's a, she's a partisan hack. She yeah. cares more about her career and networking with these evil people than she cares about actually fighting these evil yeah. corporatists for the working class people. Yeah. And, and and right now, I just put this up here, too, as well. You know, we're talking about Blinken also pro Syria, Yemen, the whole nine yards. There wasn't a war that this guy didn't like. In fact, he was mad that uh, Biden wasn't enthused enough about going into Syria full fledged. But right now, even still, now that he's become secretary of state, he says he's the U.S. is deeply concerned about Navalny reviewing response to Russian actors. And they talked actions. about as far as maybe even going in sanctioning, you know, Russia over these actions right here, right? Yeah. Now, this guy's an ultra, ultra nationalist, right? Mm -hmm. He's a, He called the people in the Caucasus region cockroaches and stuff. Where's AOC right there? Where's she out there protecting, you know, people with the identity politics now? Where, where's she? She's nowhere to be found. She's not even talking about this. Why isn't anybody concerned the fact that we're saber-rattling with Russia again? Right out the gate. Does anybody want to say anything about that? Nowhere to be found, AOC. Uh, also, too, as well, uh, Biden has been flexing his military muscles since he's got in there. Uh, Biden sends B-52 bomber over Persian Gulf after missile fired on Riyadh. Now, since he's been in office, they've been doing this, too, as well. So there's, there's been no backup from what's going on. So where's the change at foreign policy-wise? Where are we mitigating damage by putting Biden into play? He's still flexing his muscle, and nobody's saying nothing about this. The squad hasn't said one word about any of these cabinet picks, whether it be Blinken, whether it be Lloyd Austin, whether it be Avril, whether it be any of these people. Right. Even Victoria Nuland is coming back into play, and they haven't said shit. Instead, they want to talk about, you almost got me killed on the Capitol. Right, because if they if they didn't talk about that, then they, they would have to say, oh, yeah, we're not going to oppose any of this because we have to be loyal to the Democratic Party because we have to make sure they raise enough funds and we have to make sure to not elect any more Republicans in the midterms. So their whole game is always going to be put party first before people. Yeah. And that's the problem. It's like once you go in there, you, they say, no, in order to be part of this club, you have to have loyalty to the party first. It doesn't matter what your constituents want. You're going to you're going to be loyal to the party first. And if you drift away from that, you're going to be punished. And so what do they do? They they bow down and, and they do what mm -hmm. the party wants them to do. And so this is why you do not go and continue electing progressives to go into this party. And people are like, well, they won. No, wait till 2022. You're yeah. going to see a Repu you're going to see Republicans take over. Uh, unless there's some massive election shenanigans, I don't know. Yeah. I and or I, like Which is you possible. know, like it, <laughs> it, it, it is possible, but like it, I just do like this is insane. I mean, I, they're they're they think that they're can, they can continue to do this, and people are just going to continue not paying attention, and I don't see that happening anymore. And Frank, here's the big one too as well. I want you to get your reactions on this because we all met at the Force to Vote, right? We all went out there to fight for Medicare <laughs> yeah. for all. It's what these progressives campaigned on. It's what they all got elected on. Here's one of the biggest last uh, kicks in the teeth from the executive order frenzy that Biden's been going on. President Biden signs executive order with focus on restoring the eight. Uh, ACA, the Affordable Care Act. That means there is no talk. They're going to shelve any talk about medical, right. Medicare, health care whatsoever. It's getting put in the work. You're not getting Medicare for all. All you get is the Affordable Care Act. You you have to get back on your insurance. Take it. It's in your face. And nobody says any. Why hasn't AOC or the squad or anybody who's for Medicare for all say anything about this? Because this essentially means that all you're getting is the Affordable Care Act under uh, o Biden. You're not getting Medicare for Biden. all. And where is she at on this? Silent. Go ahead, Frank. And where, where is like half of independent progressive YouTube pressuring AOC to say something? Like I thought like all these people that were against forced to vote, I because I, there was going to be like a better alternative in their minds, like that we shouldn't be pressuring AOC to be for forced to vote. Okay, where, where is she, what is she doing then? Like she already voted for Nancy Pelosi. All right, now, now what is she going to do? She's going to let this pass. This reminds me of when she's what she said a couple months ago, where she was like, oh, if we just if we get the public option, then so be it. Like it, that tells me that she doesn't feel the urgency 
And that's why it's so important for people and especially people with platforms like you guys, which I'm really happy that you put pressure on these politicians is to raise awareness and to make them make these politicians feel the urgency. There's so many Americans that are suffering right now from lack of health care. And then this is the BS that we get under the lesser evil Joe Biden. Yeah. The lesser of two evils. This is mitigating damage. <laughs> and yeah. just the worst part, the worst part about the ACA is that if you had a Republican in there, you you have more of the progressives being angry. It's a Republican. Let's fight for health care. Da, 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 da. Now with the ACA, they're going to say, well, maybe we can get Joe Biden to listen to Bernie's Medicare for all during the pandemic thing. By the time they even say, let's say they even do that because they won't. Uh, the pandemic will be over and then you don't get it anyway. So what yeah. I mean, this has already been happening for a year almost. And and they haven't given you health care at this point. You need you're, we need like medical debt forgiveness for the money. Yeah. Some of these people are in debt for. We need like at the very least insulin. What what Biden did yeah, with, the, with the insulin. I mean, why is nobody talking about that? Why are they like so silent on this? Oh, well, you know, it, it wasn't going to do any. It wasn't helping people anyway. Yes, it was. Getting cheap insulin is helping people no matter how you twist it, no matter how you want to say Trump did this and that. It, it doesn't matter. Like the fact is they are denying you health care during a fucking pandemic. And the yeah. woman and the squad who ran on Medicare for all who have masks and yeah. T-shirts that say Medicare for all literally and who make money off of that, that merch are not pushing for Medicare for all, including Bernie Sanders. Yes. Who who has they Gone. have changed their language around around Medicare. They don't even say Medicare for all. They'll they'll say things like access mm -hmm. to health care, the things that we criticize, Warren, Harris, Cory Booker, all these people. And he, the things Tolstoy got criticized for when she changed the name to whatever I think it was something Single choice or plus. something. But yeah. Medicare originally plus. they were giving her crap because she was saying Medicare choice and they're like, oh, it's Pete Buttigieg's plan. But then she changed the single payer plus. Yeah. But yeah and I know that AOC <laughs> saying like access. Yeah. To healthcare. Like, yeah. They're, they're... That, that is a very dangerous word to use. Yeah. A lot, a lot worse than choice. And uh, let's not also forget that Joe Biden gave subsidies and Fred Edward mentioned it out to Cobra. He yep. gives to the highest paid insurance out there. He's like, yep. oh, here's subsidies. He gave federal tax dollars to Cobra to keep them afloat. Please.